Hello there, welcome back to another weekly vlog from Cloud with Chris. You're with me, Chris Reddington, and here we talk about all things cloud. Now, thank you for joining me for another weekly vlog. I know that normally we do these on a Sunday evening. Um, it was a lovely weekend, I'll have to say. Um, was able to go and do some celebrating of uh, with my family. So uh, birthdays, milestones, etc. in the current world that we're living in, we need to absolutely take those for granted. And um, was celebrating, as I say, with some family over the weekend on Saturday. And let's just say it was very sunny, lots of hot weather, maybe some alcohol involved. So yesterday was not a good day to go live at all. There was no real urge or feeling for me to do that. So here we are live Monday morning instead, uh, very early in the morning. I say very early, it's 8 a.m., but uh, before the working day. So hopefully able to get you all started here. So you know what to do if you like the content that we're going to go through here. Please like, please subscribe, hit the notification bell so you know as soon as there is new content. And of course, we are on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and cloudwithchris.com as well. With that, let's go ahead and jump over to the Azure blog. Okay, so uh, we're going to do some rapid fire uh, rounds here in terms of the content that we're looking at. So um, let's just start off here with the Azure Virtual Desktop updates. And yes, you heard me correctly. I said Azure Virtual Desktop. Uh, they have now rebranded away from the Windows Virtual Desktop and there's some new platform capabilities which are available as well including the ability to go and uh, have Azure Active Directory support for example. Um, pieces there around managing Windows 10 Enterprise multi-session VMs, uh, quick starting applications, and many, many different scenarios. So really great to see the evolution of that, I think, as the service that throughout the pandemic has really kept people going, uh, being productive, etc. So yeah, just great to see the evolution of that continuing on. So uh, if you've been using Windows Virtual Desktop or studying for some of the exams with WVD, worth uh, keeping an eye on now. Now, next up, the Azure API for Fear enables health organizations to deliver CMS patient access and provide a directory APIs. So this is one which is very much an update for those who are in the uh, healthcare space. So uh, Fear is a bit like a platform almost that you can go ahead, deploy, uh, or framework that you can work against. Um, I haven't particularly worked in the healthcare space. I've been on the periphery of it. I've worked with some folks who've worked with healthcare customers as well. So I kind of know of it, but haven't really got too much in depth around it. But um, what they talk about here is some of the changes that are needing to be aware of by uh, July the 1st here and some of the things that are changing. So again, if you are uh, related in the healthcare industry or you're using the API for fear, for example, um, go ahead, just check out that blog post. It might be uh, insightful, might share uh, something that you need to be aware of there. Okay, next up, uh, we have got another blog post from Mark Rosinovich. And this time it's continuing his series all about how they are improving the reliability, critical environments, infrastructure availability, all of these kind of things. And what he talks about in this one is how they go ahead and, uh, well, talk about the factors of uh, critical environments, reliability engineering, really, and talk about some of their thoughts around that in terms of how they build hyperscale uh, cloud data centers, some of the things that go into it, like the UPS, the power distribution units, all of these kind of things. So another interesting read. Um, they also talk a little bit around things like how Sphere might play a role into that as well, and how they bring some of that early... Uh, early technology into things there as well. Uh, so they kind of build it and try it out before some of these services actually go live as well. So really interesting. Again, if you're interested in the more engineering side and how they actually build that at scale, want to go and take a look at. Next up then, uh, why customers including SAP choose Azure for their SAP solutions? So again, there's a few high level bullet points here. Uh, customers broadly favor Azure when moving on-premises SAP S4 HANA to the cloud. Uh, with Azure, customers can unlock critical business insights from their SAP data. Microsoft customers are betting on innovation that drives digital transformation. By choosing Azure, customers can innovate with Microsoft services they already use. With Microsoft, customers have 
access to best-in-class hybrid solution with Azure customers achieve cost savings and improved return on investment, and customers trust Azure for its enterprise readiness and unmatched security and compliance offerings. So there's a good roundup of reasons why, if you are using SAP, why you might want to go and consider Azure there. So uh, they have some sessions coming up at Sapphire now as well, uh, which I believe is the SAP uh, conference there, if I recall correctly. Yeah. So go ahead and uh, review that if you're in the SAP space. Next up then, uh, we have five reasons to attend the Azure hybrid and multi-cloud digital event. So of course, you'll hopefully have seen my blog series that I wrote recently all about Azure Arc for application scenarios, which really forms a part now of that hybrid and multi-cloud story that Microsoft is really stitching together. Um, needless to say, I think this is a space really to watch out for. I'm really excited by just what I'm seeing emerge and unfold in this space. The idea that we get all of that cloud benefit, but actually be able to take it back to the on-premises world is absolutely awesome, or even other clouds, right? So the reasons why you should come to this, uh, be among the first to hear a major Azure Arc announcement. That is certainly a teaser. Um, learn how Azure customers are using hybrid and multi-cloud solutions. Uh, so people like Avanard, Siemens Health and Ears, and SKF Group. Uh, see Azure Hybrid and Multi-Cloud Solutions in Action. That includes Azure Arc and Arc Enabled Data Services, Azure Stack HCI, and AKS on Azure Stack HCI as well. Uh, Discover how to be more productive and agile with hybrid cloud solutions and get answers to your hybrid questions. There'll be some live chat, Q&A panels, those kind of things there as well. So that is taking place on Tuesday, June the 29th. It's 9 a.m. till 11 p. 11 a.m. Pacific time. Um, so again, you know what to do. If that's an area of interest, take a look at the Azure blog post. So next up then, let's go ahead and take a look at the Azure updates. Rapid fire time, let me just grab a drink. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. Azure Backup, upgrade to TLS 1.2 or above for the secure Mars agent backups by September the 1st, 2021. So um, I'll just expand on this one a bit because this is one I shared recently um, on social media. Uh, TLS 1 and 1.1 end their support on the 1st of September, 2021. So. This is something, if it hasn't been on your radar, please do ensure it's going to be on your radar because September the 1st, 2021 is not that far away and you don't want to be caught out, especially with uh, security protocols, etc. So uh, do go ahead and just review that one. General availability of update in policy compliance for resource type policies. That was quite an interesting one about almost like a binary, whether it conforms or doesn't conform for a resource type. Uh, it was an interesting read. Uh, Azure Database for Postgres, Flexible Server supports Postgres minor versions in public preview. The open source API portal is now generally available. So if you've ever used the Azure API management tool set and you've used that open source API portal like the one you uh, the one you generate through static content, that's what I was trying to say there, um, that is now generally available. Azure Database for Postgres, uh, Flexible Server supports Postgres 13 in public preview. Azure Migrate, private endpoint support available in public preview. That is a big, big announcement if you are looking at doing your lift and shift and you're looking at bringing some infrastructure from on-prem or in other clouds into Azure. Uh, pre excuse me, previously it would go over the public internet. Now you have the option of uh, doing that using private link and private endpoint there. So quite a substantial update, small update, big impact. Really like that one. Um, Azure Cache for Redis Zone Redundancy for Premium Tier is now generally available. So again, great update if you are worried or concerned about your availability targets that you need to go and hit. General availability of the Enterprise Scale Landing Zone Reference Implementation for AKS. This is another big one. Uh, of course, Enterprise Scale Landing Zone has been around for some time with more of the typical infrastructure plays. Uh, now we're seeing that bleed across into uh into workloads like AKS there as well. Um, I've spent a bit of time getting my head around that, but again, if you're in the AKS space, this is not a bad one to uh, keep on your radar. Public preview syslog event collection from Azure Monitor Agent for Linux distros. I am going to click into this one because uh, I remember reading this one and it just intrigued me a little bit. So Azure Monitor has introduced a new concept for configuring data collection and a new unified agent for Azure Monitor and Public Preview. The new agent and the data collection rules improve on a few key areas of data collection from, from VMs, including granular and flexible configuration. 
Da, 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 da. There's been an issue wherein sys log data collection wasn't working as expected. This has been addressed now, and a latest release includes support for sys log collection from Linux machines available on all supported distros. So, again, sounds like it's uh, one worth taking a look at. Public preview of alerts based smart detection for application insights. So, I think that's to do with the um, the kind of automated machine learning based uh, or AI based. Uh, thresholds for your application insights i believe i haven't had a chance to play in that one yet but if i'm wrong please call me out and let me know uh general availability of application insights node.js pre-aggregated standard metrics that is a great update azure database for postgresql hyperscale citus now compliant with additional certifications azure database for postgresql single server planned maintenance notifications generally available Azure SQL public preview updates for early June 2021, and they are track and record changes in your Azure SQL database through change data capture. Stay compliant with regulatory requirements for data residency with backup storage redundancy for Azure SQL database, and shape query performance and behavior without having to directly modify an application's original T-SQL code with query store hint support for Azure SQL. Azure database for MySQL flexible server standby server selection is in public preview. And then a number of GA updates for Azure SQL. Well, one, in fact, uh, use resource health to monitor health status of your Azure SQL managed instance. So that's some nice integration there. Azure database for MySQL single server planned maintenance notifications in general availability. And that is the same update as well for Azure database for MariaDB. Azure Defender for Azure database for PostgreSQL uh, is available. Sorry, let me do that again. Single server in general availability, Azure Defender. No, I'm going to do this again. I'm just going to read these out and go ditto for the other. Uh, my brain hasn't switched on quite yet this morning. Azure Defender for Azure Database for PostgreSQL. Single server in general availability. That is also true for Azure Database for MySQL. And I believe that's it in terms of the list. Uh, and then there's also Azure Database for MariaDB, Azure Defender in general availability. General availability, six new locales added to speech service to support speech transcription. Uh, general availability, confidential computing price reduction on DCS v2 VMs. We all love price reductions. Azure IoT Edge integration with Azure Monitor is now in public preview. Five more free services are available in an Azure free account. I didn't catch this one earlier in the week. Uh, start building with three amounts of Azure Database for PostgreSQL, Azure Database for MySQL, Azure Key Vault, Azure Logic Apps, and the encoding feature of Azure Media Services. Excellent. We all love three things. And finally, the Azure Maps Elevation API is now generally available. Next up then, very quick on the Azure DevOps blog, there's a few good ones to catch up on this week. First off, another Azure Fun Bytes episode uh, with Jay Gordon in this time. Guest is Thomas Maurer talking about hybrid cloud on Azure. So we, of course, had Thomas on uh, probably sometime last year. So I'm sure that'll be a brilliant session. So check that one out. Another Azure Fun Bytes session all about migrating your data and uh, creating that in Cosmos DB. I'm a big fan of Cosmos DB. You'll have heard Will and I talk about Cosmos DB in the uh, geode pattern, the hands-on version that we did the other day. Uh, I think Steph and I have talked about Cosmos DB. And in fact, we've got a session talking about how to design some of your uh, data backends there as well coming up. So lots of great stuff coming on the data front. And then finally, on the uh, stories from the community, uh, integration testing for ASP.NET Core using EF Core Cosmos with XUnit and Azure DevOps. Create a Zach pack for an Azure Synapse Analytics dedicated SQL pool using Azure DevOps. Automated deployment of Azure API management changes using Azure DevOps. That is a big, big blog post, actually, that is worth checking in for folks because uh, that is something I see come up time and time again. Azure DevOps PowerShell scripts. Uh, list all Git repositories, Elegant CI CD with Databricks Notebooks, and how to build SQL database deployment automation pipeline tutorial. Good. So let's move over to GitHub. Uh, on GitHub this week, we have a few updates. I believe we have four. So uh, securing the open source supply chain by scanning for package registry credentials. So uh, they do various bits of secret scanning. Uh, they, of course, have the ability to have things like Dependable in there as well, checking for uh, dependencies and whatnot. Um, I like this update where they're going ahead and scanning for package registry credentials because, of course, if the credentials are leaked, I, as a malicious user, can go ahead and start pushing nasty things up, replacements of source code, and then use those, and they're part of your supply chain. So nasty ways to get in there. Great, uh, 
great update there from GitHub. Next up, another security stroke engineering type update. Um, this time, privilege escalation with Polkit. How to get root on Linux with a seven-year-old bug. If that title does not draw you in, I don't know what will. Um, I've had about half of a read through this one because I didn't have the chance to read the full thing. But again, go through all the exploitation steps and just shows how these various CVs and these various potential vulnerabilities come together into what is... Um, effectively being able to breach the uh, breach route on Linux there. I mean, it's it's just fascinating to read, and I'd encourage you to do so just because it gets you thinking in that mindset of, oh, you know, no one will ever go and discover that, or, you know, we don't need to go and really focus on security. You really do, folks. It More now than ever, I think we're seeing, of course, cybersecurity becoming a hot topic for, across the globe. Go ahead, take a look at this. You might be interested in what you learn. Uh, next up then, there was a blog post from GitHub giving a bit of a recap of what came in May. So, being able to upload videos across GitHub, including to issues, pull requests, and discussions. Uh, you can also sync an out-of-date branch of a fork from the web with only one click. That is a big, big uh, update, again, for such a small feature. Uh, hosted Ubuntu runners will only contain the latest patch release for each supported version of the .NET. <laughs> Bless me. Apologies for that. The hay fever is kicking in over the past few weeks. So the hosted Ubuntu runners will only contain the latest patch release for each supported version of the .NET SDK. Beta API to approve actions from forks. Uh, brownout notice. API authentication via query parameters and the OAuth applications API for 12 hours. GitHub Desktop 2.82 includes native builds for Apple Silicon pleased with that. Uh, also, you can now run, oh, well, it just says you can run uh, GitHub Desktop natively. GitHub Discussions Label Announcement Category Format. Uh, there's a demo from Mishmanners, uh, and you can go and see that. Uh, dark Dimmed Mode is available on the GitHub Docs. Uh, they've got Dark Mode on GitHub.com, now on the Docs as well. And then GitHub Enterprise Server 3.1 uh, was shipped as an RC, a GitHub Enterprise Cloud self-service compliance reports have moved and restricting email notifications to approved domain public beta. They've also added a copy button to all code blocks for Markdown and there's some updates for GitHub Mobile, working with pull requests is now easier, a better filtering and metadata experience. Um, we talked about the syncing of a fork earlier for the GitHub repositories and new tools to discover and resolve pull request conversations. GitHub security, of course, many updates. Repository level, notification control for security alerts. Uh, depends about version updates, can now ignore major minor patch releases. Elm 0.18 deprecation and depend about version updates. GitHub advisories database now includes Go advisories, big update there. And SSH authentication with security keys as well. And then finally, GitHub sponsors adds suggested tiers to profile setup. So, finally, by no means least, least important at all. This was just the order that uh, the posts were released in. Um, Black to Cats turns five. So again, this is, as you may have guessed from the name here, uh, GitHub's initiative to amplify black voices and talent in the tech community. Very, very worthy initiative. Very much a lot more that can be done there. Um, I'll be honest, this was actually, I was chatting with uh, Katie, my girlfriend, and one of my friends on the weekend, we were just talking about uh, representation across different industries, um, not just of uh, black people, but of course, and black lives and black uh, black talents. We're also talking about things like uh, women in technology, women across industries, uh, representation of no matter what ethnicity you are, no matter what beliefs you are, no matter uh, whether you are straight, gay, bisexual, whatever. Um, there's still a lot more to be done there. And it's something I really do want to do more with on this channel. Um, I don't want to just do it for the sake of doing it, of course. That would be wrong. I want to bring it in the right way. Um, and I'm still working on that because I know there's more that I can do. I know the uh, representation of folks is probably not as diverse as it could be. Yes, diverse from a global nature, but in terms of many people's backgrounds that maybe we're getting some... We're not seeing some of those perceptions. We're maybe going down quite a solid view. That's something that is very much on my radar and something I'm looking to fix. So um, stay tuned on that. Uh, there is more work to be done there. I do acknowledge that. Um, 
But this blog post here from GitHub goes ahead and talks about some of the initiatives they've been doing here as well. So if this is something which is important to you as, uh, as a cause, definitely go ahead and uh, take a read through that one as well. And finally then, uh, we are on the Cloud with Chris updates here. So uh, let's just go quickly back over the last week. Uh, so we are going with Monday. No, let's go with Sunday, starting off with. So Sunday, of course, weekly vlog 23. This is weekly vlog 24. Uh, that means we're nearly halfway through a year of doing these. Wow, that has flown by. Uh, great updates there, as usual. Uh, next up then on Monday was a live stream with my good friend Carl Cook, Carl underscore IT underscore nerd on Twitter, if you'd like to follow him, um, irishtechie.com. Great discussion. Talked all about GitHub Actions, how I used them on Cloud with Chris. Also talked about um, what we're going to be doing next, with the, which is more focusing on my integration platform uh, coming up in July, I believe. But before then, Carl is doing something incredible. Carl is going to be raising a ton of money with your help. Please donate. Please, please donate. He's nearly at £2,000. Uh, and he's going to be turning his hair blue. He's going to be getting a glittery blue beard as well. And it's just going to be amazing. So please do support Carl. Really, really appreciate your efforts there if you can support and of course Carl appreciate what you do and thank you for coming and being a brilliant guest on the show okay then on Wednesday static web apps in Azure I was once again a guest on the devreal.io show had a lot of fun Sven thank you for having me once again uh, Baz Dian thank you for having me uh, Maxim great to hang out with you once again uh, really really great group there love having the opportunity to come and speak with you all and work with you all so thank you for having me had a lot of fun Thursday so yes we've had something on Monday we had something on Wednesday, Thursday. It's been a busy week, once again. Uh, on Thursday, I released uh, the final part, for now, of my Azure Arc for Apps blog post. So uh, that one was all about event grids. I uh, was really impressed by that, actually, just how seamlessly it worked, how well it mapped back to some of the event grid and concepts, event grid topics, event grid subscriptions, etc. Um, so go ahead, ch take a read of that one if that's a topic of interest to you. And then finally on Friday, uh, oh, even sorry, no, not finally, on Thursday, we also had a live stream with Sarah Lean. I have not updated the website yet because I need to um, pull the audio out to go and upload the podcast file there. But on Thursday, we had a session with Sarah Lean uh, talking about two different pieces, hybrid cloud and just a bit of an update there and our thoughts around that and what excites us there. And then talking about life as a cloud advocate, first starting off with the shiny things that I think a lot of people know and just setting the scene. And then getting into the nitty gritty of it, getting into the real detail of what life is like as a dev advocate or life in dead rail cloud advocate. And a lot of people think, you know, dev rail, it has dev in the name, I've got to be a developer. Or they see the shiny side, they don't see maybe some of the negative pieces that come with it because you are a public face, you are publicly out there. Um, there are some negative things which come with it. Of course, not everyone is friendly on the internet and all of these things. So... Um, we talk a bit about that and just wanted to give a bit of a balanced view and a balanced argument because I think sometimes people see the shiny side of it all there. So uh, that was something we just wanted to land. So really pleased to have Sarah on. Sarah, I called it out in the show, but I'm really thankful for everything you do and everything that we've been able to talk about because of our kind of mentoring, coaching relationship that uh, you're helping me along my own journey. So just a big thank you um, for everything you do. It's gratefully, gratefully appreciated. And then finally, we are getting onto it this time, was Friday's session with Will Eastbury. So uh, Will has come on and done a few sessions on the show previously, uh, notably talking about the geode pattern. Well, this time uh, we're taking that theoretical side of things and taking it into practice, going ahead and getting hands on with the geode pattern. So how you go and build globally distributed applications, which they're effectively nodes as part of a global infrastructure. So if one goes down, it doesn't matter. You're able to keep going uh, because other nodes will continue serving requests. Uh, we talked to an application which is to do with the Open API, uh, oh, sorry, OData, I should say. Um, and yeah, it was just a great session, really intriguing, really interesting to see how that comes together and maps back to the theory. So again, we'll just thank you for joining. I know that we always have a lot of fun when we do these. Uh, and I know we potentially have some ideas of stuff we can do in the future, so stay tuned for that one, folks. 
Now, let's go ahead and see what's coming up. First off, of course, we're doing Weekly Vlog 24 right now, so we'll skip over that one. Uh, we have got Shannon Quinn coming on Wednesday to talk about Azure and VMware. Uh, I was actually uh, mailing Shannon just before going live with this vlog. Uh, we pushed back by about 30 minutes, so we'll be starting 6.30 UK time instead of 6. Um, but I'm really looking forward to that because I'll be honest, VMware is not my not my thing. It's not my kettle of fish, whatever, <laughs> whatever analogy we want to go with. Either way, it's not really my thing. And I'm looking forward to learn a lot more in, in that one uh, because I certainly will be. And then on Friday, we have got Johnny Chips himself, John Lund, coming on and talking about his own journey into the cloud. We actually recorded this one last week. Brilliant session. Had so much fun chatting with John. So many insights. And uh, again, John, thank you so much for joining on the show. Um, I think it's going to be a hit for sure. So folks, mark that one in your diaries. That's going to be a good one for you to go and watch. And then the hope is that I'll get back on the bandwagon with the blogs this week, but um, things are very busy over the next few weeks. I think I'm doing about three recordings a week just because of how the diary has ended up for a little while. So it is one of those things, so bear with me. The blogs might be a little slower, a bit not on their regular cadence, but we'll get to some normal levels soon. Uh, but th there is by no means a lack of content. If you go to, in fact, maybe this is something good to call out here. Let's go over to... Um, github.com slash cloud with Chris. So I have moved the cloud with Chris.com repository elsewhere. Um, there we go. Um, so it is now in its own cloud with Chris organization. And what I'm doing is I'm pulling together all of the repos that effectively make the cloud with Chris stuff there. Um, so all of the work that I've been doing on my integration platform, um, I'm actually coding in the open. I might change that because I think there's an opportunity for it to become a SaaS platform potentially. Um, but who knows, maybe I'll change my mind there and just open source it. But um, what I'm going to do is start putting together all of the different repositories and code and things that I work on for Cloud with Chris here. So it's one captive area that you can go and look at. So you can see, for example, cloudwithchris.com. We can go take a look at that. And then once again, all of the issues and things that were there before are still there. Um, so I've got tons of different blog ideas coming up. Uh, it, like I say, it's just a chance of finding them finding a space to fit in with these so we'll get there we will absolutely get there but uh, it's all fun i'm really enjoying creating all of this content and uh, doing what i do over here for you all so with that thank you for tuning in uh that has been this week's episode i think i don't think there's anything else that we want to go and particularly cover so you know the deal if you have liked the session today, please go ahead, hit the notification bell so you know as soon as there's new content for you to go and listen to. Hit the like button so you can help out the algorithm. And help hit that subscribe button so you know. No. Wow, my brain is struggling today. Hit the like button so we know what you like. Hit the subscribe button so you can show you like Cloud with Chris and you help out the algorithm and hit the notification bell so you know as soon as there's new content. That is what we were trying to say, folks. So, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, cloudwithchris.com as well. Stay safe, stay healthy, and until next week's vlog or until next week's episode or blog or however you wish to interact on Twitter, perhaps, where I love speaking with you all, stay safe and stay healthy. And until then, bye for now. Thank you.